welcome back to the Let's Play series of Hearts of Iron 3 Black Ice mod, Empire of Japan. It's episode 3. It's been a few weeks. I've had to do some things because I am currently preparing uh, to go to basic training uh, for the Coast Guard. So, you know, <laughs> some basic things going on in my personal life. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they released a new version of this mod. Uh, not too long ago, and I made the big mistake of actually downloading it and installing it <laughs> without uh, thinking about how that's going to affect my current save game that's going on here. So, uh, you know, apologies on that, but I have uh, re-downloaded the old version, got my hands on it via a torrent, and uh, put it back on. Everything seems to be working properly. Um, we're still where we left off, 7 a.m., uh, 2nd of July, 1936. Everything is still the way as it is. As, at least that's what it looks like. So, right now, the only thing that I'm focusing on is continuing to... Well, I'll zoom in here. Continuing to upgrade my infantry divisions, which I have a lot of. My infantry divisions massed here in southwest Manchuria, a.k.a. Manchukuo. And uh, here are the divisions that are awaiting uh, engineer brigades to fulfill their... Um, compliment because you know they have artillery but no engineers these guys have engineers but they need artillery these guys here only have infantry brigades in fact all of them basically have only infantry brigades and uh, these guys are mixed um, infantry uh, brigade infantry tank and armored cars so it's gonna kinda I guess be a, a special mixed uh, core I'll make from these kinds of units we just shipped in a bunch of new garrison units, you know, with no leaders or anything, just to bring them down, pacify China once it's taken over. And my one, uh, like, recon cavalry division um, under Ikarashi Hakuba. He's a level one, just leave him there for now. Artillery is on the way to these two um, <clears throat> divisions down here that need it, and then they'll be folded in and then added to another core. So. Right now in the production queue, the only thing we have going on is a lot of artillery, a lot of engineers, some new ships, and uh, with also light cruisers. I mean, sorry, light cruisers. Those are the cruisers, heavy cruisers and light carriers, and one um, standard aircraft carrier, the Huryu. So let's continue on from where we left off. Right now, economically speaking, we're a little bit borderline here. We're not having much in surplus, but I'm hoping because we started... Um, getting some right here. We started getting a synthetic industry going and uh, we're getting extra resources and as time goes by the amount of output from this facility will increase exponentially. So we can only hope. Go away. <laughs> I'm still not going to be trading with people. Um, I'm not getting a lot of money. I'm not getting a lot of anything. Uh, my crude oil is actually going up pretty well. Let's speed the game up. Oh, land power. Okay, so now we're getting some here. Getting some, uh, we're getting almost uh, 10 energy every day from Manchukuo, our puppet. And uh, unfortunately, we're losing everything else, but not by much. The amount of deficit is not staggering, so we can't sustain that for quite a long time. All right, so let's see here. <laughs> we got 40 transports. Well, we're going to get them on. And the Iojima, we're going to ship them all the way to Kwajalein. Rebase there, if you please. And, uh, yeah, we have one supply ship going from Tokyo. Straight to there, just side pan. And it does have a garrison. So we're just going to leave it as it is right now. I mean, there's not much going on. We can focus on that later. But I do remember we had a couple of um, garrison uh, movements going on. We have some uh, Taiwanese divisions here. I'll leave them there for now also. Torpedo boats stationed there. Okay, civil defense advance, repair rate 8.5%. Wonderful. And the uh, truck and prime mover reliability. It seems that's also, yeah. So, you know, five extra days, but then you make them a little faster, a little more defensive, a little more um, tough. So not bad, not bad. Let's see, truck and prime mover reliability, 1938, we can cancel that for now, civil defense, um, 
also advanced 1939 we'll cancel that so we're just going to try and catch up in these major things here which we are behind in industry education and medicine medicine is god it's like the stone age so <laughs> we'll have to do a lot of catching up if we can and these things are moving so right now there's not really much going on uh, the Soviet Union I have noticed has a lot of forces stationed all over the borders here um, including the actual border that can't be crossed because as we discussed in previous videos this entire swath of land here is completely impassable which is lucky for us right um, <laughs> and so you know it makes fighting on this front uh, not a really big priority here however there is uh, actual connection infrastructure can allow in here as well and they have stationed forces here uh, but you know they are actually bordering um, you know me however the war with the Soviet Union is probably not going to happen for a while so we can uh, put that on the back burner just keep good relations with them don't piss them off I want to increase game speed here until something happens until a new development comes up uh, here we go the formation of uh, Mengjiang the Kwangtung Army Command has maintained contacts with various important personages in Inner Mongolia. Using these willing collaborators, we can set up a regime there that will keep the area quiet while we conquer elsewhere. And that's this area right here, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I like having control over as much land as possible. Besides, there's no revolt risk anyway, so you know there's not that large of a risk of there being an armed uprising. We've got light infantry divisions here. I think these light infantry divisions are going to be really good. You know, the Japanese, um, actually, bro. The Japanese, when I kind of uh, think of their military strategy, they didn't really focus on lots of heavy ground units. They didn't have a lot of armor. They didn't have a lot of, let's say, um, uh, let's say battle line infantry divisions. They had a lot of light infantry. Um, specializing in jungle warfare and island defense warfare and stuff like that. They were really mobile, foot mobile, not really mechanized. So this kind of stuff like artillery barrel and ammunition is important because all of my infantry divisions will have artillery in them. And because of that, uh, and my, uh, my basic goal of maintaining a really infantry, a uh, foot soldier predominant army, I'm going to be researching those technologies more than, let's say, like armor. I will have armor, probably amphibious armor, and I'm going to be mixing those in with marine landing divisions, which I am going to make in a few years. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of IC to spare right now, which does suck. Hmm. Hmm, these upgrades are going to kill me. It's terrible, I tell you, it's terrible. And my officers and everything are also not at a hundred percent or more but there's nothing really I can do about that for a while so <laughs> we just have to hold in there 0.69 money 1.62 grand materials eh. no I can't do that sorry man <laughs> I don't need to see this huge list I know there's a lot of land units that aren't assigned to different HQs that's the point right now yeah it kinda sucks because um, at this time period, which is really accurate, the Japanese were not exactly ready for fighting a global conflict. In China, they would do well because, you know, China being a, a nation that borders them and is in close proximity just across uh, the China Sea. Um, you know, there's really nothing that can be done uh, when it comes to, at least in this time period right now, that can be done with fighting the United States, the Soviets, because the Soviets are really... Um, industrially superior to Japan right now. Um, even like a far away nation like the UK that only has like small outposts here, like Hong Kong, and further down in what would be, um, I mean, I guess you know this is the large island of Borneo here, uh, but like you know Malaya and uh, what today would be Brunei right here would have trouble fighting them because of the superiority of the Royal Navy. So in this time period, it's it's almost as if Japan is a a, a second-rate power, um, which is a shame because you know eventually I would like to actually have a huge conquest of the area, but you know right now I'm just a second-rate power looking for big boy status. 
There we go. We'll take all these guys, load them on the ships, and we will drop them off in Huludao. And speaking of which, I guess these guys have arrived. Yes, they have. We're going to merge them. Perfect. Now we have two new fully complemented infantry divisions. Where are we going to put them? And we got four cores here, consisting of 171,000 men. This one is cavalry, light infantry, light infantry, and cavalry. We don't actually have a lot of... Yeah, we don't have an infantry, uh, blah, 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 an infantry corps just yet. Well, we can make one. I think this is a good opportunity to make one. So we're going to do strategic redeployment to the south, to Jixian. And these are all waiting. Yeah, these, these guys need both engineers and artillery. <sighs> yeah, what a pain. Same here. In fact, all of them do. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about that right now. Once these guys get down, we'll make a new core. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think we've already... Yeah, we've stripped everything we can off of the home islands right now. And then we have a bunch of garrison units here. Uh, can't do anything about that. It's a damn shame. Iwo Jima Garrison, Kwajalein Garrison, this garrison here at uh, Any We Talk. Here's another one at Ponape and Truck. We're going to pick up the one over at Any We Talk. Uh, Any We Talk. Damn, I'm having some trouble saying some of these names. It's been a long time since I've had to say them out loud. When you're thinking, it's a lot easier, right? Mm. And they're making good progress. Once they get down there, we're going to form a new core. And according to our order of battle, we have 1st Imperial Cavalry Corps, 1st Imperial Light Infantry, 2nd Imperial Light Infantry, 2nd Imperial Cavalry. We need a 1st Imperial um, Infantry Corps, so that's what we're going to do. There they are, they've arrived. Congratulations. You are now a part of the 1st Imperial Infantry Corps, and your new commanding officer will be. Mm, we'll give him level three commanders. No, yeah, like this guy, Umeta. Oop. There you go, and we'll attach you to the first Imperial Chinese Army. So the first Imperial Chinese Army is now full. It can only use one more infantry division inside of the first Imperial Infantry Corps that was just created. And we're going to move this HQ over to Chengde. Now, there. And we'll move this HQ to Luanhe. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Now we have almost a quarter of a million men in the first army here. First Imperial Chinese army. Secretary of Public Information Education Advance. Emperor, we have improved our abilities in Secretary of Public Information Education to level 1. And giving us the following benefit. Minus 1% manpower, plus 1% leadership. Excellent. <laughs> when that um, research is completed, it's important because uh, when you go to war and you fight battles and such, if you lose, if you don't have that technology research, you suffer really bad home front um, demoralization effects. At least it simulates it, right? Um, that's why you need to have propaganda, basically. And that's what the Secretary of Public Information is about. It's not about what you know. It's about what everyone else knows. And there's Yosef Goebbels there pointing up in the air screaming. Let's continue. <laughs> yeah, it's been a really um, eventful month I have to say in my personal life but also you know earlier today there was this whole f catastrophe um, you know because they had the uh, tornado that came through uh, some of the midwestern states Oklahoma City in particular got hit very hard and um, I would just like to say you know a small little message uh, you know I uh, give all those people there all the families that are suffering uh, my condolences for any losses that they may have incurred 
and uh, I hope and pray for their speedy recovery. How was that? <laughs> I'm not trying to seem like a like a big humanitarian or philanthropist, but you know, I wish ill on no no people. Okay, oh, <laughs> except the Chinese. Well, that's not personal either. It's completely political in this situation. <laughs> uh, there we go. Rebase back to the homeland. Yeah, so we're going to make a huge army here in northern China. Steel armor casting, great. Not that I'm going to be using that a lot, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> we'll keep that on the bottom. It's not important. Secretary also not really that important. Broadcasting is at 1938 levels. Giant infrastructure projects. You see, after I stop playing for a while and then I come back and look at the, like the technology tree, it's strange because my priorities are slightly different than when I was playing before. Like, my conceptions about what I was going to do uh, for my strategy, what my immediate needs were, are slightly different. So it's kind of interesting. You see here, like at the bottom, I'm researching submarine technology. And... Uh, my general thoughts on that are, you know, um, submarines are important. They're great at convoy rating. They're great at cutting off a landlocked nation or an island. If I'm going to be doing a lot of island warfare, I need to make sure I can cut off supply shipments to the island, right? Especially Singapore. Singapore is going to be a real bitch to take later on once the war really begins. So I need a large submarine fleet, or at least a substantial one, powerful enough to try and cut off all of the supplies that will be going through the Indian Ocean here, and also the Eastern Pacific, after I take um, Hawaii. So there's going to be a lot of different uh, strategies I can use to shut down shipping for supplies and basically starve out the defenders of all these places. The most effective thing i found is submarines. Submarines can linger in an area for an indefinite period of time, unlike planes who just simply patrol. Um, they're really economically easy, unlike large surface ships that are also good at convoy rating. Submarines are relatively cheap, relatively cheap in industrial capacity to build, repair, maintain, and also they don't eat up a lot of fuel. Uh, range finding. Allow research of motorized support units, infantry. Let's have a look at that. Motorized support units. I can build motorized AA and anti-tank units. Okay, why not? That might be useful. So we'll put that as new priority over the submarine hull. There we go. Okay. So yeah. Unfortunately, in this uh, period of time, um, you know, before the war. Uh, Prebellum, right? It would be Prebellum, Antebellum's after war, Prebellum was before war. Prebellum, uh, Japan, uh, I'm going to be doing just a lot of organization, a lot of modernizing and upgrading, and there's nothing I can really do about it. How sad is that? I'm stuck in this conundrum. Hmm, we don't really need all that much. Okay, yeah, there we go. Slightly decrease industrial capacity going to production. Stop wanting to trade with me. I'm a belligerent nation. You need to learn this by now. Mm hmm. Heavy AA guns, good until 1939. Well, I can't ask for anything else. That's another research um, branch off of the list for now. Besides, the Chinese Air Force is not very powerful. Mine is a lot more powerful. Theirs is fairly outdated and, and antiquated. But mine kind of is too. Like, if you look at my close air support, they're biplanes. This is close air support. You know what I mean? Like you would you would have seen something like this flying around in the the twenties. So I have a lot of work to do when it comes to upgrading my air force. And speaking of which, am I upgrading my air force? Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, I, I am. It's actually right up here. It's one of my priorities. Good. Well, at least I can agree with myself from three weeks ago. Shift the head back. Three semi motorized infantry with one motorized artillery. That's pretty useful. That's pretty useful. I'll just keep that as like a shock unit. 
because um, in this part when I invade this part largely here it consists of really rough terrain let's look at the terrain so here's just plains completely flat fighting in this particular state at uh, Shanxi here is going to be a little more difficult than fighting in the Republic of China and that's kinda silly because the Republic of China is much bigger Shanxi's terrain is a lot more treacherous right on my borders here the only way I can really break through easily is across these plains here break through and then come down through these forests and there's hills all over the place and the capital city is also on a hill so there's a lot of different kinds of options I have but I still believe with my initial strategy that I punch down quickly and take like water like these rivers here right the river flows along a path of loose resistance and that's what I'm going to do also here in China it's different northern China you have the Chinese plains that run all along their major urban areas here at least a good part of them uh, I'd say maybe a third of their major urban areas so I can use that and run through their lands really quickly when we get to the back end of the nation where some of their other cities are it will be a lot more difficult a lot more difficult but luckily uh, I have a fleet I have a large transport fleet that I can use to land and do pinpoint attacks in all these different places and land troops and quickly try to gain a victory well as quickly as I can it's a lot more difficult to defeat uh, the Chinese alliance Oop. yeah so you know the first Moscow show trial um, one of uh, Joseph Stalin's uh, pet paranoia projects right <laughs> I can read this here if you want the trial of the 16 in December 1935 the original case surrounding Grigory Zinoviev began to widen into what would be called the Trotsky Zinoviev Center in July 1936 um, Zinoviev and Kamenev were brought to Moscow from an unspecified prison the trial was held from August 19th to August 24th, 1936, in the House of Trade Unions and included 16 defendants. All the defendants were sentenced to death and were subsequently shot in the cellars of Lubyanka Prison in Moscow. So, Lubyanka is still a place that exists there. It's actually, I think, is the headquarters of the, the FSB, the uh, contemporary Russian uh, security service, like the KGB was during the Soviet Union. They still use the building, um, kind of, oh, and the Spanish Civil War is broken out. So let's have a look at the battle lines. So yeah, in early 1936, after the electoral victory of the socialists, popular demands for social equality evolved into a virtual revolution against the clergy, landowners, and monarchists. Mobs attacked churches and tried to collectivize farms. Unions started strikes, and anarchists assassinated enemies of the people, quote-unquote. The newly installed government was unable to restore order. The Spanish army joined the conservatives and Catholics to put down the social revolution, and they thus styled themselves the nationalists, quote-unquote. The government facing an army rebellion styled themselves Republicans, quote-unquote, and decided to fight, joining in with the forces of revolution. The Spanish Civil War had begun. Many countries like Germany, Italy, and the Soviet Union intervened, uh, intervened with forces in the conflict. And Republican Spain has declared war on the nationalists, led by Francisco Franco. I actually know a lot about the uh, Spanish Civil War. You know, I'm not a Spaniard, and and uh, <laughs> I don't have any ability to say that I have um, any authority to talk about the subject of the Spanish Civil War, but I've self-educated myself a lot about it, and it really was, it really was uh, a tragedy. It really was a tragedy. Uh, you had people from all strata society. It was a class war. I mean, you read in that. Well, I read it, and you know, in that little uh, text pop up, it was a class war. You had people of the same nation that weren't fighting over any kind of particular social or political beliefs. They were just fighting because their part of society, the clergy, the monarchists, right? Because the monarchy had been dismantled um, when the republic was formed. All of that, um, they destroyed themselves from within. All the different uh, castes of Spanish society were fighting. Even you know, even the clergy, even the Catholic Church was. And I think when something like that happens in a nation, it's just um, probably one of the most heartbreaking things that you can see. Like in Syria, going on right now and has been going on for quite a while. A tragedy, truly.
Eh, reinforcements aren't that important. So yeah. Anyway, getting back to the tasks at hand. <coughs> oh. Yeah, all of my units should be finished here. How many engineers do I got? Only two? <sighs> but I have plenty of artillery. Why did I... Why did I build all these artillery? Well, I guess I knew I would need them. So, eight here. I got... F yeah, there's five here. Eight. Eight. Okay. There we go. Fortunately, I have a long time before hostilities break out. So, when I overlook little organizational things like this, the consequences aren't dire. They aren't dire at all. Oh, speaking of which, yeah, I do need to keep on top of keeping track of my <coughs> wow, keeping track of my garrisons. Let's start a supply route to Quadrilane. <laughs> From Tokyo to Quadrilane, please. Thank you. Okay. So, when the day passes, magically, all of these guys should be getting supplies because it only takes one day to sail from Tokyo Harbor all the way to here. And they go. <laughs> Miraculous. Okay, I think these guys are now folded in. How long do we have? 50 hours before I can fold them. These guys are only 24 hours. Why is that? Why is that different? 0.71. God, they want to rob me for everything I have. No. <laughs> yeah, these uh, artillery units finish their reorganization period a lot sooner than the engineers. A lot sooner. Almost a day sooner. Okay. Group. 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 Okay, so we have four divisions just like that. With the artillery attached. And group. Okay. So we'll take this and we'll move them. All these guys have artillery now. So we'll move there because this is the stack that needs engineers. And these engineers are almost ready. Just a half a day remaining and then I can put them somewhere. Attach one to the core that's been formed and then make one a freelance. There we go. And you are ready. Group. Detach from that and you will be attached to the first Imperial Infantry Corps and you will move down. And it was that simple. And this is ready. And we'll do the same thing. No, it doesn't really matter. Group. And then we will put you in Quan Cheng. Because you are full, but you don't have enough to justify creating an entire new core over. <coughs> well, we are going to actually have a couple infantry cores, it looks like. Maybe four or five, just from these units here. Not bad. Not bad. That will definitely be enough to handle the Chinese. And uh, some random anti-aircraft guns. Cool. <laughs> we'll just keep them there. As everything's moving around. Okay. These transports are back. Well, auxiliary <laughs> ships. Like minor transports. Hmm. Yeah, these two bases, a quadrillion and truck, very important. Truck, truck, I'm not sure what to call it, truck or truck. The base. And we're going to send a convoy to truck. Ooh, five ships. Wow. Okay. We're going to shave a little more off of the consumer goods. Everyone stop trying to trade with me. I hope there was some kind of code 
in in the the like you know, cuz all of the different factors in this game are basically dictated by text documents. So there has to be some kind of text document line that dictates these damnable trade uh offers cuz I'm just going to be getting them constantly and it annoys me. The, that little happy chiming bell sound, glockenspiel, like that sound annoys the piss out of me for some reason. Shut the fuck up. Oh my god. Oh, we want to, we're having a civil war. We want to trade. <laughs> we need money so we can kill our own people. Now, what a mess that is. What a mess that is. You have the conservative north, or conservative like northern central um, plains here, uh, fighting against the more urban uh, you know, urban, uh, liberal, uh, Republicans, right? Republicans sl slash anarchists slash communists slash socialists slash all that other stuff that they are. So, you know, I mean, that really just, you know, Spain is a mess. It really is a mess. It must be interesting playing a game as them, having to fight the Civil War like that. Okay, we have a, a destroyer ready, so we're going to put them right here in Susaki. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll just leave them there. Take down a little more on the production. Cool. Destroyers are useful. Especially when um, you research the technologies that give them longer operational range, they become extremely useful. Very useful. Because you can send out entire flotillas of only destroyers and they just screw with everything. Um, they're not particularly good against capital ship fleets or, like, you know, aircraft attack, but they are really good against um, surface ships that are smaller, namely convoys, and uh, they have a longer reach than submarines do. So, you know, it kind of balances um, my naval strategy between uh, submarines and destroyers. And there's, like, this really big uh, debate in the Hearts of Iron 3 forum world about what is a more effective screen ship, a light cruiser or a destroyer? Uh, I'm kind of in the destroyer camp. Motorized artillery brigades. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And that's like one of the one-shot wonder technologies, so that's it. And... What's next on the list? Industry, bump industry up. Industry is important, just, you know, more um, IC, more IC efficiency, better supply production, less manpower, but manpower is not something I'm going to be suffering shortages from as Japan. Uh, it's a population of over 100 million. I'll be fine. Another destroyer. There we go. Let's keep them like that. These are two different classes of destroyer. How do you explain that? Okay, we'll split them apart. Apparently, one class is a lot better than the other one. By a whole 500 kilometers. Yeah, it's taller, too. What the hell? <laughs> uh, great. That's another thing. I'm going to have to upgrade a lot of my ships, and that takes so much time. Okay. Right now, we're standing at, yeah, 240,000. So almost a quarter of a million in that one army. And they're not even at battle strength yet. They're all, you know, a little um, understaffed, undermanned. And once you mobilize, then it will increase. Oh my god. <laughs> These trade offers. They're going to give me a brain aneurysm. I'm making a lot of supplies every day. Yeah, okay. Get on the boat and get off the island. Rebase completely over to truck. Sadawan. Like all of these islands here are fortified and they have these things, but they have absolutely no strategic value, at least to me. No strategic value whatsoever. You know, what the hell good is this going to do, Millie, with all of these guns and port facilities and crap on it? Might as well just put it on a different island. Like if Quadrilane didn't exist and I, everything was on, like, Watie or Watche. I think it's Watche. Then I would have put it on there because it's closer. Whole difference um, of like, you know, 230 kilometers there. It's enough to actually care about. 
with ships that may be a little uh yeah okay ships that may be a little older um than they could be where range is really restricted there's nothing i can do about that now yeah okay saudi arabia you're just going to become a puppet of the UK anyway, probably. Stop it, Poland. You're not even going to exist. <laughs> it's a little mean to say things like that, isn't it? South Africa. <laughs> Stop trying to trade with me, Poland. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, nothing I can do. Absolutely nothing I can do. I just have to sit and wait for all these things to start getting built and my technologies to continue to uh, be improved. And I'm kind of stuck in the water until then. Which sucks. Education and industry are the most important things to me right now. Education, more leadership, industry, more industry. Ooh, 0 0.71 for two. Wow, that's a pretty good deal. It's like the AI plays by different rules than I do. Because everyone else was offering me like 1.6 rare materials. And the Soviets can offer me two. I'll accept that. Alright, there. You can rob me blind. We don't have to go to war over it. I don't think $0.71 dollars a day will really make much of a difference in the end. I'm broke anyway. I need money. Money plus 75% just from that one guy. But I lose 20% because of this. Idiot. But at least the consumer goods during peacetime's down, so he's worth the, the money hit. <clears throat> hmm. Well, there's nothing I can do. I think I already picked out all the best leaders possible. Shame. Hmm. Yeah, like, look at that. I have a huge force sitting here, and these guys don't even have any leaders. Let me assign some leaders. Yeah, you, and um, you, you'll pick up skills as time goes by, so I, I don't mind giving guys that don't have special little traits. China incident, 1931, sure, why not? Okay, there. So we have 10 divisions of infantry sitting here, 10. That's 130,000 men just sitting there. <laughs> They're just waiting for some engineers. That's all they're waiting for. Speaking of which, good. They will be done in September. This month! Hmm. I'm afraid you're going to be seeing a lot of these different production screens and... Uh, they don't even have a... Okay, we'll attach you somewhere. Um... I guess it'll have to be to the Kanto Shiatsun. Okay. Total number of land forces. Well, not total, but um, total number of organized land forces currently in this theater. Almost half a million. Not bad. Not bad. I need more. <laughs> I need more. I need more men. Don't you understand? I need more. Imperial Coastal Flotilla, a crap load of submarines, love submarines, and uh, the upgrade, <laughs> here we go, the upgrade flotilla of just things that need to be upgraded desperately. Um, watch them, should you? Like this battle cruiser, the Hie. Uh, is that something that also needs to be upgraded? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. There's a whole difference of 40% in the operational range. Do all these things need to be upgraded? 2,700. Yeah, what's the maximum numbers? I think all the ships here, no matter what they're in, what kind of organization or formation they're in, yeah, they could all be upgraded. And that's going to be costly. Oh. <laughs> even these, yeah, even these carriers here. A Fuso only has a range of 2,000 kilometers. What's the deal with that? This is 4,000. Completely double it. 
So after I um, finish producing these new ships, I'm going to upgrade all the old ones. And I think that'll be really a uh, wise investment of my resources. I also need more carriers. I need more aircraft carriers. Um, <laughs> that's all I need to say. I need more aircraft carriers. When you play as a nation like Japan, aircraft carriers are unbelievably important. And I'm already building, what, four? Small caliber tank cannons. Again, not really important, but it's good to at least not be extremely behind. So, we'll just leave it as it is. Yeah, I'm building four aircraft carriers. One, two, three, four, yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> I don't know if my economy can actually withstand that much. I need to do some conquering soon, otherwise my economy can't. And it goes with the whole imperialist mentality like I was talking about in the last two videos. The Japanese, as a matter of survival economically, to be economically viable, they needed to conquer. They needed to get more resources, more land, in order to sustain what they had already built and what they had. So it was like a Roman kind of empire building where um, the empire necessitated the conquest, not conquest necessitating empire, you see. One had to exist through the other. The Roman economy <clears throat> was so wealthy and everything, but their expenditures were so massive in different public works and different arenas, namely uh, the legions that they had to conquer in order to bring in more booty, more wealth, more plunder, to not revitalize the Roman economy, but just to keep it going, to break even. And it's a shame, too, because also um, the Romans had access to so much of the world's natural resources and precious metals, and uh, they made more money to pay for you know, projects and such, and it just caused inflation. They had no concept of inflation, and they minted themselves to death, as the saying goes. Okay, we'll bring this transport fleet back. We'll put them over here in Osaka. Come home, boys. <laughs> You've been out there a little too long. Uh, yeah. I'm not liking how low my... Because look at this also. If you look at the bottom part of that, the 1911 U.S. Commercial Agreement, I get 65% more rare materials. As soon as that commercial agreement ends, I'm screwed. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I need to make sure that my military juggernaut is ready to roll. As soon as that ends and war breaks out, I need to be getting new resources sent. <clears throat> Speaking of which, let's go ahead and look at the Chinese resource pool, shall we? We have a lot of resources uh, here just in this little area. We've got some coal we got a little bit of each here in Taiwan, and Hohart, we have some more coal. We have um, all three here in Beijing, called Beiping here. Tianjin has oil. So yeah, I mean, there's different places. Aluminum, horses, tungsten. Tungsten I'm going to grab immediately. I'm going to actually land forces there to grab that. Tungsten, heart attack plus 15%. Take that away from the Chinese use it for ourselves. Nothing can go wrong from that. And it's a simple little landing, easy to defend. And I think also it's a, yeah, it's also a, a victory point, a strategic point. So I do need to hold that in order to win anyway. Oh, speaking of winning, nope, not that one. Um, I'm still aligning, yeah, I'm still aligning to the Axis. In fact, I could probably join I guess not. Why not? Neutrality, that's why. There's always there's always something stopping me. Neutrality. Bah. I'm not neutral. I'm just acting like it so nobody kicks my ass. <laughs> Although I think I could probably do a pretty good job. I don't think I could win I could win like a really large long term fight, but like a short one I think I could do pretty well. Basic small fuel tank. A lot of research of now just small fuel tank, no longer basic. 
Let's get that started. 1937. Yeah, what do I fire control system yeah okay you know I'm gonna bump that up in priority I'm gonna be using my Air Force sooner than my fleet because of the war in China so it's good to have priorities set and, oh, and we have engineers engineering <laughs> and these guys are gonna be done in the next four days so I'll just load them on and stand by Oh, and <laughs> unpause the game. Let's see, we're using 10 a day, so we can withstand 120 more days of this. Eh, I'm not feeling too good about that. That's not good. Basic single engineer frame. Emperor, we have finished the research of basic single engineer frame, which will give us the following benefits. Blah, blah, blah. I've allowed research of multi-role fighters twin engine fighters and single engine airframes. So, let's have a look at that. Yeah, okay, sorry. So, here we have all the stuff. Multi-role fighters, twin engine fighters. Twin engine fighters are wonderful. I love them. Uh, I use them almost more than interceptors just because of the sheer range. You can have a... Because, like, you know, here in the Pacific you know, there's not a lot of land as opposed to in East Asia. It's all just water. So these isolated little bases here, here, and here will all be able to have their own fighter support and maybe support each other if it comes to that. So twin engine fighters are a lot better because they can cover that distance a lot more effectively than interceptors. And uh, because of that, I'm going to go ahead and begin research on twin Oh, not yet, but soon. How about that? Soon. I won't forget. That's something that I will remember. It's it's uh, completely vital. 1200 kilometer range torpedo boat. This is like the best torpedo boat ever. And there's only one. <laughs> okay. Hmm. What's going on over in Spain? Still looks pretty bad. However, I did notice that Barcelona has fallen to the Republicans. Um, it starts out as a nationalist stronghold, but it went down pretty quickly. The southwest of Spain and the northwest are actually linked up now. It's like a western half against the eastern half. Oh, they just advanced over in the Basque country. Here's some more engineers. We'll ship them over to China post haste. And then we can have another infantry corps. Career. Yeah, a completely new infantry corps. And as I create these units, more and more. Um, Experience, I guess, in production practicals, it's called, uh, are made. So um, the research, uh, not the research, the production times and also the production uh, requirements decrease exponentially as you make more and more. There is a limit, but it's a considerable limit. You can really be quite skillful at building a certain type of unit and crank them out quickly like the United States and four engine strategic bombers you know you can crank those fuckers out and unfortunately as I also build more and more of these brigades my officer ratio decreases nothing I can do about that sucks although I could, no, no, because supply consumption, unit recruit time, but then I get more officers, more experience. I'm going to do it. This is going to be a huge mistake. I'm probably going to go into deficit here, but I'm going to try. So as soon as the day ends, we'll see what the damage is. Oh. And I lose 500? What the... Whatever. Let's go into deficit. See if I care. 
<laughs> oh god. Damn it. Why do they do this to me? Why does the game do this to me? I could I mean I just Oh, and then we broke even. Oh, we're even in, we're even in surplus. Amazing. What happened? Good job, guys. You saved the country. Even though I broke the economy. It's like it just was magically fixed. Okay. Well, there you go. I can't go into deficit. I'll just break even. Throw a curveball at you. Mm-hmm. That's a completely new core right there. And now everyone wants to trade with me because I'm getting money, which I'm really not. That's the strangest thing, I have to say. Oh, you have money here. <laughs> I hate that. I hate when the AI does that. Oh my god. I don't have any money, okay? I'm broke. Leave me alone. I'm broke and happy. I have a big army. And, and yeah, I'm like North Korea right now, okay? <laughs> the only thing paying my troops is hatred. Hmm. There's nothing I can do about that. Resource stockpile. Stockpile of money will be empty within two days. It looks empty right now. Hmm. Maybe it was a mistake putting on that no revolt. Small arms. I can't even afford to upgrade these guys with new weaponry, but that's okay. <laughs> We're just gonna make it. Bump that up. Infantry, weaponry will always be put top priority along with the other national things. Excellent. What are we using now, anyway? What's our small arm? The Type 44 car. A uh, carabine. Okay. Ooh, artillery. <laughs> These guys could use some artillery. These guys could use some engineers. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and outfit these units. There we go. Next engineers and next uh, other things we get. We'll fold them into that, make a core, and then ship it over complete. And that'll be fun. I'm not playing very well, am I? <laughs> I'm not sure what I did differently this time, but, you know, I'm just broke. Not like anyone cares. And I'm running out of resources. Very tragic. Infantry support weapons. 1937. But we're almost at the end of the year, so we'll put that at the top as well. Hey, can you go down? Thank you. Okay. There's a warfare equipment. Jungle warfare probably will be useful. In fact, let's do that right now. 1941. Damn. Well, I'm not doing that. And everyone wants to trade with me. I'm broke. I am broke. Do you understand me? Or, like... Ugh. I'm not trading with anyone on Earth right now. Well, actually, I am. But I'm not. I can hardly afford to. Why is everyone bothering me? I'm broke. <laughs> Look, I don't even have a lot of... I have a lot of supplies. Maybe I could sell supplies. You know, that would be a really good idea. Who has money? Persia does. Venezuela does. Hey, Venezuela, you want some supplies? Damn it. France, you're not going to exist. In a few years, more supplies? No. Saudi Arabia? No. How is Albania? How is Albania making that much money? Albania. They're the smallest country in Europe almost. Uh, Turkey? Turkey? Nope, nobody wants to trade. Okay, well, who needs supplies? The Dominican Republic. Can I interest you in some food? No. Oh, no. Well, how about I just sell it to the Soviet Union? No. 
Mm-hmm. No. I'll have to keep an eye on that. It seems like the only way I'm going to buy myself out of trouble is if I sell fuel or supplies. And it seems like the world just doesn't want to have anything to do with me except to take my money. No, huh? Really, France? You sure about that? Damn it. <laughs> yeah, this really is quite embarrassing. Oh, Turkey, you need supplies. Hey, look, look, I got supplies. Damn it. What is it with everyone? They want to, yeah, they just want, they just want my money. They don't want to pay me anything. They only want me to pay them. Bastards. Whatever. Screw them. I'm going to make another infantry corps, and there's nothing they can do to stop me. At least I have control over my own fate that way. Hmm. That really is annoying, though. Yep. Okay. You are all ready. Good. One, two, three, four, five. We'll move them to Xuanhua. And then we're going to make a new corps. The second Imperial Infantry Corps. Ooh. Very official sounding. Very practical sounding. Hmm. Yeah, nothing much going on right here. As can be expected. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Probably would be pretty nice to be stationed out there, though. <clears throat> Get a nice tan. Not have to do anything. Just sit, train, and listen to ukulele music. <laughs> Although I imagine that's not what they're doing. Okay, Poland. Supplies? Damn it. <laughs> Please, someone buy my supplies. Look, I have boxes of food just waiting to be eaten. I ha oh, oh yes, Venezuela. Thank you so much. How many are you willing to buy from me? Ten? Eleven? I fucking love you, Venezuela. Mwah! Gracias, Señor Bolivar. <laughs> Yay, I'm in... Well, not really. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the money now, but that's great. And now I'm losing 250 a day. My god. And they cut off my rare materials. I guess, I guess they didn't like that deal with Venezuela. <laughs> Which makes no sense. Now France is in deficit, but now I have money. Okay. Does anyone else want to buy my supplies? I'm serious, guys. I'll give you a great deal on it. You're helping a nation of 100 million. Okay? And I will never bother you. I will never invade your nations. I just need you to buy my shit. And they say no. Mm. Whatever. So I have a bunch of these things here. Now that I've researched a lot of technologies, um, like the uh, invisible buildings, right? They give good benefits. I need a thousand. Oh, God. Well, that'll take a while. But at least I don't go spending money every day. Every now and then I'm going to check up on the world markets. I can sell more supplies to people. Like Turkey. Turkey, you have so much money. Just... Ugh. What are you doing, man? <laughs> Please. Look, I'll even give you ships to carry your food in. You just have to buy them from me. I mean, what a great deal. Even Liberia is making more money than me. Liberia... This is just terrible. You don't want oil? You want supplies? No. Do you want fuel? No. You don't want anything. New Zealand, happy and lonely down there. Mm, I gotta do something about these rare materials. I gotta do something about that. I still need to find someone to buy my supplies. <laughs> You know, I'm going to pause the game, and I'm going to try to put together a bunch of deals here. I'll be right back. 
Okay, well, I take it back. I just literally checked oh, practically every nation that has a capability to sell me anything. Well, no, for me to sell them anything, you know. But, but we could be have a mutually beneficial relationship, right? <laughs> Diplomatic terminology. And none of them were interested. None of them. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I literally checked all of them. Not uh, not every country, but you know, most of the countries that had a healthy surplus I could cut into. They just didn't want to feed their people. Fine. Fine. Don't. Although my upgrades are um, decreasing, which is f such a great thing to see finally happening. And these uh, huge hits on my IC, these... Uh, Carrier air groups are also almost finished. They'll be done this month. And that'll free up a lot of IC, and I can use them for actually building things that I want to. Which will be more aircraft carriers, but don't tell anyone. They'll be upgrading ships, not building new ones. Or maybe... No, well, not yet. I'm really economically not able to build more industrial capacity, so forget that. Medicine! Alright. Go right back up there. Hmm, I'm barely scraping by with energy. My coal stocks are only trickling upwards. Oh, oh great. <laughs> the secretary denies the accusation. The ruling party can't be wrong even when they are wrong. People, believe me. 60% chance I get screwed over. 40% chance of no effect. And nothing happened. Thank you, God. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't screwed over. <sighs> okay. At least not that I see yet. Okay, I was. Damn it! You... Bastard! That pisses me off so much. Damn it! <sighs> oh, the joys of playing as a nation that actually has a public relations program. I thought Japan was supposed to be like this really homogenous state. Well, not really. Well, it is homogenous, but I guess not politically. Not yet. <clears throat> Once the war begins, it's a little more unified. But in this time period, everyone's so free-thinking. It pisses me off so much. One dollar a day <laughs> in exchange for 2.35 ray materials from a country that will cease to exist soon. I don't feel much of a problem from paying them as long as... Oh God, you know, I'm like running out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to accept. I don't know what I'm going to do. This isn't good. All of this is... <laughs> Damn it. I'm really facing economic ruin here. <clears throat> if this game is supposed to be kind of aimed at increasing the reality of uh, the historical immersion, it's definitely working. Japan really was on the edge economically. 1.79 money for 3.68 rare materials. It wouldn't save me. I need to find a more permanent solution. I need war! I need war now! I need a new core, please. Second Imperial Infantry Corps. We will attach it to the... Oh, that's right, I need a new army. Well, first we'll give him a leader. A level 2 guy. Nobody too impressive. <coughs> uh, somebody with offensive capabilities, there you go. You got the job. Congratulations. Oh, no, wait. Logistics wizards. Important. Especially when you're in an economic crisis. This is the first Imperial Chinese Army. We will name this under a, a new army. The Second Imperial Chinese Army. Second Imperial Chinese Army. And then we'll attach it to. And then give them a level 2 commander. Yeah, not bad. You got the job. We'll move you here. 
Yeah, we'll even give you an aircraft gun, anti-aircraft gun brigade to go with you, because we have one sitting around. Lucky you. And you can sit there. Well, not really. You're not sitting at all, actually. Yeah. We're going to have a huge force. So now, our um, but that new core created just like that. Our numbers under the official registered forces have approached 311,000. So a third of a million almost. Not bad. I could do better than that though, even more. Hmm. Oh, got some planes finished. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll just put you there. Just stay there and shut up. Look at that production decrease. Now I can upgrade these ships. Uh, well, we have to upgrade Flotilla here. Let's upgrade them. All of these things are old and need refit. And look at that. Only All these ships to be upgraded only took 5 IC. And we will upgrade these as well. Super heavy artillery. We can even make this a carrier. Let's we'll make it a, keep it a battleship. And there we go. These things are upgrading. We have some destroyers here. These are relatively cheap to upgrade, as you can see. I see only went down one point. Some more destroyers. And one battle cruiser. We could make it a carrier. I don't know if we could afford that though. I don't know how much IC it would cost. I wish it would tell you. Let's keep it a battle cruiser. There we go. And we can use that extra IC for upgrades. Not bad. Not bad. Very good. This entire thing is upgrading. And I don't know when they're going to be done, but let's have a look. In 1937, October, really a year? Something sooner, something's later. December, December, December. These aircraft carriers will take a while. Oh, more ice. Oh, thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even more ice. And look, the economic crisis is averted. Yes! <laughs> And everyone still wants my money, but at least I have it to spend. We're going to take a break from building things for a little while. I mean, that's a lot to pass up on, but at least we can upgrade these things now. And we can do some more, um... Well, what do I need more of? Now that I have surplus again. Economic disaster has been averted. A wonderful, wonderful turn of events. Um, you know, that's a really good question. These things also look like they could be using upgrade. All these are ranged at 5,000. These are 3,400 heavy cruisers. I might just upgrade everything. Oh no, it already is upgraded though. Okay, well that's fine. Hmm. I have a number of air groups here. I'm getting a new batch of aircraft carriers. I have plenty of transports, plenty of screen ships, and others that I'm upgrading right now. More than enough land forces. Maybe I could use some. Yeah. Maybe I could use some uh, infrastructure on these islands. Not infrastructure, not this, not roads, but port facilities, air bases, uh, land forts to defend it with. You know, I'm going to do that. Let's build some land forts. Just level one for now. There. And hopefully my economy won't be completely ruined. Hopefully. Let's have a look. Because I do want to defend these places. Uh... Compared to all the other islands, they're, they're the most important. All construction. Transport planes, great. 
basic strategic bombers, large few. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of important. All these are kind of important. I would like strategic bombers. Mm, what would I? Capital ship main armament. Yeah, let's just get basic strategic bombers ready. It's already November 36, so those these will be ready um, within the time frame required within uh, a short period of time. All these other things are a little advanced, so we'll wait for that. Excellent. Now we have transport planes, but then the economy went down again because I was using all that I see, and you know when you have factories working, building things, that happens. So we'll cancel one. Let's cancel the one on Iwo Jima. Or Saipan, rather. Iwo Jima I'm not even bothering with. Saipan, cancel that. Alright, let's have a look. If it fixes itself, then I will not complain. 19, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, bam. Didn't even do it. It barely made any difference at all. Well, if I have to pick between truck and quadrilane, I'll pick truck. There we go. A little buffer. Yeah, like barely any difference. Damn it. I can't just ruin myself like this, guys. They didn't even go down at all. Lock construction of motorized AA, motorization of cavalry. Oh, that already finished. Wow, I saw that near at the beginning of the video. Motorization of cavalry. A little too advanced for me right now. You know, what am I going to do? If I'm putting all this stuff to supplies, I have to put it somewhere else in order for it to not be used like that? Maybe? Because I'm making a lot of supplies now. Eh... Uh, I guess if I overdo something, let's put it on consumer goods. We'll set supplies at 30. Maybe that will fix my production problems. Let's have a look. If it fixes it, that's great. Then I can put all my excess production without any loss to my resources into consumer goods. No. <sighs> Is this land fort, any land fort ruining it? Do I just have to cancel all of it in order for people to be happy? Is that what I have to do? So I can't build any land forts at all until war begins. That's really putting a damper on all of my plans. Not even. Okay, so there is no difference. What the hell? This is... <laughs> I was going surplus, and then I wasn't. I had one day of... of avoiding economic ruin. One day. Maybe it's because I'm upgrading all those ships, too. Yeah. That might be it. Does anyone want to buy my supplies? <laughs> Come on, Poland! You know the Germans are coming, okay? I'm a prophet, I know these things. They're coming and you're going to want supplies. You're not going to win, but I want your money. It's a fire sale. Everything has to go. Alright, well, how about fuel? I mean, can I interest you in anything? No. I really can't. Ireland makes more money than me. A small little island that isn't even its own island. It shares the island. There has to be something I can do. There has to be something I can do. And everyone just wants to rob me. 1.79 for 4.2. Mm. You know what? I'll take that. I'll take that. Nope, nope. Yeah. I will take that deal. I could also work on improving my merchant fleet. I don't have a lot. I need more. But that'll have to be later. I need resources so badly right now. I need war. Isn't that silly? In order to survive as a nation economically, I need war. 
But that's really the only solution that I have. Hmm. Education, more leadership, excellent. Bump that up to the top again. And let's see how far it goes up to. It goes from 22.69 to 23.43. Not bad. Not bad. No complaints here from me. Can someone please buy supplies for me? Look, it's not that difficult. Yugoslavia! Oh, whoa, what just happened? I don't know. Something happened. I see is wasted. I wish... I wish that were the case because... It's still eating up my, uh... Strategic, uh, stockpile here. It's just dwindling. Industry advance. More I see... Okay, maybe that might help with my resources a little bit. We'll have to see. We'll see here in a little bit. Mm. No, in fact it didn't. What the fuck? Damn it! <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Why, why, why do you do this to me? Mm. Just driving me crazy. Yeah, I basically need a war. That's the only thing that can help me now. Nothing I can do economically in relation to trade to fix this problem. I can't export my way out of deficit and ruin. Nicaragua, come on, man. No. Nope. <laughs> Costa Rica, all these little banana republics. Nope. Luxembourg, oh. Can't trade with them because they're landlocked. Duh. Nope. Philippines is a puppet of the United States. Can't trade with them. Hungary's landlocked. New Zealand even needs supplies and they have money, but they wouldn't buy it from me. Turkey. Mm, nope. Can I sell you anything? What else do you need? Coal? Okay, forget it. So, at the end of this month, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I want to apologize again for taking such a long time to upload these, but I'm going to increase my output of them. I've missed playing this, and I've missed the kinds of aggravating problems that seem to pop up all the time. Look at how much, look at how much I'm making, and I have nothing to show for it except this: my resource stockpile just decreasing until it reaches zero, and then the entire nation just sinks back into the ocean. Damn, Germany. I don't even know you could do that. 14.89? What the hell? Impressive, I have to say. Very impressive. Yeah, nothing I can offer them anymore. I'm already selling them stuff and they're satisfied with my bento boxes that come in crates. <sighs> As soon as the war begins, though, I'm going to make the entirety of East Asia eat bento boxes, and they'll all be speaking Japanese in school. It's just a matter of time. Okay, so I'm going to leave it here. Light armor designs, short barrel, high explosive tank gun, etc., etc. I'm going to leave it here. So, as in real history, Japan is having a lot of economic pressure internally. It does not have enough resources in its own lands to to sustain itself. I am sitting on a time bomb here. And the only thing that can save me is aggressive conquest and the taking of other people.
people's resources for my own. That's the way it will have to be. This is the end of part three, and uh, thank you for coming in and watching it. You can expect part four in the coming days. Sayonara.